everyone and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having an awesome week. Today students we are looking at IELTS speaking part one. Uh, specifically this speaking part one will be about uh, communication. Welcome, Carolina, our chat moderator. Hi, Fuang, Sevde, Angel, Anahita. Nice to see many of our uh, members in the class. Welcome, Rupinder, Anna, David. Good to see subscribers and lots of students ready to learn. Uh, everybody, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live classes. We've just added, I think, three new videos to these websites as well. Uh, this is our academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com and you can join our premium IELTS package by clicking this big red button that's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment for uh, lifetime access. We are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a British Council agent. I have sat the IELTS and I have been teaching IELTS for nearly 20 years. You're in great hands with us. Uh, students, when you get our premium IELTS package, you get all of the necessary tools uh, for these live classes as well, audio materials, practice exams, and much, much more. Uh, you can use the code 14 days uh, coming from our most recent uh, YouTube video release uh, to get an extra 10% discount. For the general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. It's the uh, green uh, background here and uh, you can click this big red button. You can also purchase the course through uh, YouTube, through Shopify. So you should see the products. Um, it's available in most countries uh, on the YouTube channel as well. So you can do it that way. Uh, Carolina is our chat moderator everybody today and she is here to help you. So if you have questions you can ask her as well as me. Uh, and um, for the apps, uh, definitely uh, check out uh, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help. Link the apps to the websites. Use the websites. We've got lots of help there for you. Here's a part one speaking blog with sa sample band nine answers that you can practice. I'm always including these blogs in these uh, live classes now, so you can check those out. They're very useful and people definitely enjoy them. So check out uh, this blog uh, when you have a moment in your day for some further practice learning vocabulary. Uh, Instagram also has vocabulary and extra help for you from us. Uh, IELTS underscore AE help, GLTS help. Become one of our many, many followers on Instagram. We'd love to see you there also. And again, if you have questions, my email address is adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Students, we've got a full lineup this week of live classes for today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Uh, right now, we're looking again at speaking part one. Everybody is able to join the chat. Uh, tomorrow, we're looking at reading uh, with members, and we're uh, going to be doing listening part one and part two for subscribers tomorrow. So subscribe to the channel. It's free and uh, you'll be able to join that chat for the listening. Um, that listening exam, again, is taken from our websites and um, you want to uh, uh, use those websites as much as possible before your IELTS exam. Uh, speaking part two, speaking part three on Saturday, uh, we will do uh, speaking today. We will um, give answers in the chat and we will also have a chance to uh, speak verbally aloud interacting with each other through the websites uh, you'll have a chance to volunteer uh, students uh, we just released this video um, it basically tells you or gives you advice on what you should pay attention to when you have 14 days before your IELTS exam there's some uh, practice materials to give you an idea of the format of the exam as well so check out that new YouTube video we will have a full-on seven-day study plan video coming out soon as well. So lots of great content 
uh, being created uh, for you. Um, as everybody can see, I'm a little bit smaller and fuzzier <laughs> in today's video. It's because I'm using my secondary camera today. Something's not go not going right with the primary. So I'm, I had to uh, switch to uh, a backup camera. So if you're like, why is his head a little bit smaller? Did he shrink? No, I didn't shrink. <laughs> it's a different camera. It's a backup camera, everybody. All right. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's get into um, this uh, speaking part one. I see that it's just a little bit out of the screen. So I'm going to resize here for us. So um, yeah, there we go. So you can... Uh, see exactly what's going on a little bit bigger there okay we'll find that perfect size it's all about perfection Fong says you're so shiny today yes this camera has a little bit more exposure going on than the other one <laughs> all right everybody so uh, let's get into some speaking um, and um, when you're speaking for this speaking part one make sure to speak and repeat okay so copy what I say copy how I say it now those of you who are in these classes regularly you know that I'm from Canada as I said at the start of the class uh, a lot of people think oh it's Canadian English <sighs> it's not like yes that's kind of true we have some English that we can say is Canadian English. Some people would say Canadian English is a mix of American and British English, but it's not the best way to look at it. Um, it's better to think about it as regional. So uh, I live on the west coast of Canada and the west coast of Canada, the west coast of the US, we have very similar English. So uh, if you're ever in uh, California, Washington, Oregon, British Columbia, uh, Alaska you'll hear very similar kinds of English so we have kind of like a Western uh, English style in North America a central northern central southern and then an Eastern uh, kind of style of English and if you travel a lot of the US and Canada you'll discover that you'll be like oh people in Toronto speak English the same as people in New York we're very similar right it's kind of where people are close to each other so anyway um, where I'm from it's a very nice clean crisp form of English. Uh, it's what you hear in many of the TV shows and movies, which are many of them are made in this part of the world. So a lot of people are familiar with the accent, the sound. So definitely speak and repeat. So copy what I say, copy how I say it, try to match my speed, match my intonation as much as you can. And if you're having trouble, then maybe at some point today or tomorrow, look at this video again and uh, practice some of the questions and some of the key sentences, okay? Wajid, I am paying attention to the chat. Um, Wajid, congratulations. Um, I see that. Thank you for using big letters too. It caught my eye. Um, although it does mean that you're shouting at me, but I think it's appropriate. Wajid Hussein says, thank you, Adrian, sir. I got overall seven with your important videos and online class. Uh, Wajid, you are very welcome. I'm glad that you passed your IELTS exam. I would love to get a testimonial from you. Students, when you're passing your exams and you think, hey, you know, this guy kind of helped me. Um, here's a shout out. Uh, you can always send me a testimonial by email. So Wajid, if you send me, you know, just a what you thought was good, what you thought maybe we can improve. We love feedback, we love testimonials. So um, I appreciate that in advance. All right, let's get into some uh, speaking part one questions. I know that's why you're here and that's what you want to do, so let's do it. You go to your IELTS exam, uh, you check in, and uh, then you meet with your examiner, and um, you are there for a 12 to 15 minute interview. It's very standard. The examiners are well trained, and they will say, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. We are conducting this exam in Victoria. The time right now is 9 in the morning. This is exam center 79YQ. Let's begin. May I see your passport? Give them a nice full sentence. Repeat after me. Yes, gladly. Here is my passport that I have used to register for this exam. Please take a look 
There you go. Um, nice full sentence answer. Don't just say, yeah, sure. It's just such an awkward generic start. Um, the examiners get so tired of hearing the same kind of generic start and it's not fluent and it's not really professional. For band seven, eight, nine, you do want to show professional language. You can show everyday language. You can use words like wanna and gonna but you also want to show professional language, like using going to, want to, okay? So combine every day with professional. In the beginning, start professional, start clear, start very polite. So full sentences, okay? Repeat after me. May I see your passport? Yes, gladly. Here's my passport that I have used to register for this exam. Please take a look. Okay. All right. Anna has this answer for us in the chat, and there are certainly lots of ways to answer uh, questions. Um, Anna says, well, here is my ID card, which I have used recently for my registration. Please have a look at my credentials. Okay. The word well, Anna, is somewhat impolite, um, so you want to avoid that. Uh, just start with here. Here is my ID card, which I have used recently for my registration. Please have a look at my credentials, okay? Don't say well. It's kind of like, well, here you go. If you really want to see it, well, here it is. Um, it's kind of awkward in a professional setting, so don't use well. I know you're trying it to see, hmm, does that work? Is it good? Not so much in this situation. Okay, not right off the bat. All right, uh, Fuang has this, and I encourage everybody, try, try the English that you're learning. I will tell you exactly where it is appropriate, useful, and where it's not, okay? So Fuang says, yes, certainly. Here's my passport, which I had used to register a couple of weeks ago. Please take a look at my credentials. Very good, Fuang. It's nice. It's polite. You're using an adjective clause, which I had used. That is very good. Examiners like to hear adjective clauses, which I had or which is the for sure. And then comes the next question. What is your full name? Okay. All right, so what is your full name? Now, don't make mistakes at the beginning here. Um, also, in the IELTS, they will always ask you, and uh, what should I call you when you give your full name? So, to show the examiner that you prepared and that you're ready to present your best English, give your full name and tell them what you want to be called. So, my name is uh, Timothy um, Simpson as it is in my passport. Please just call me uh, Tim for short. So nice introduction, right? That's what we want, okay? We want to introduce ourselves professionally, politely, accurately. Don't make mistakes. A lot of students, they, you know, they learn so much advice online and it's really hard to know what is real, what is not real, what's important, what's not important. Use your logic, okay? So you're in a professional situation, okay? Just like a work interview or um, an application interview for school or for your master's you're using professional it's an exam okay it's not a chit chat that's a very common mistake where people think they need to go in for a 12 to 15 minute chit chat to show their english it's not a chit chat you're being measured on your ability to communicate effectively in english okay so keep that in mind you're not there for a chit chat you need to present yourself professionally okay so uh, give them your full name. My name is Timothy Simpson. As it is in my passport, please just call me Tim for short. Technically, they're not marking you at this time. The examiner will not be putting marks on the paper. They'll be checking. They'll check the paper that they have to check that they asked for your name. Okay, They have like a checklist that they need to go through. Technically, they're not marking you here. But if you're making mistakes, 
it's going to be a problem and it's going to affect your score because no examiner feels confident to give a candidate a band 8 or a band 9 when they can't introduce themselves professionally okay so you do have to pay attention you have to be your best from the start okay all right Domenico says My given name is Domenico and my family name is La Fauci. Please refer to me as Dominic. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Polite, professional. That works, Domenico. Excellent. I can tell that you are on the ball. Um, Domenico, have you done your exam? Are you in Ireland right now? What's going on? Give us a little info in the chat. I'm sure some of your peers are excited to know. Okay. Um, just Sunpreet. Sundu. Uh, says well my full name is Jasan Preet Singh you can address me by my given name uh, Jashan or Jasan um, this is kind of according to a native English speaker this would be somewhat impolite you're starting with well which is fine you don't have to be polite on um, the exam but it's not going to be considered natural English. That's the problem, okay? If you sound impolite or unprofessional, keep this in mind, students. Um, it's not, so the examiner is not like, oh, I'm going to give you a low mark because you sound unprofessional, because I'm insulted. Okay, so if you sound impolite or unprofessional, it's not that the examiner will think, I will give you a low mark for insulting me. Ooh, I'll get you back. Revenge is mine. Revenge is sweet. Um, no. <laughs> it's, examiner sees so many students with so many different levels. They really don't care. Okay. But they will think mm, this is not a band seven uh, to nine uh, student because or candidate because uh, they are unnatural in this situation where they should know the difference uh, between formal and informal English of course right especially if you're studying for business or uh, certain like a law degree or you're doing your master's I mean you can't go up to your master's supervisor and be like well my full name is Adrian Smith but you can address me as Adrian your master's supervisor will be like excuse me <laughs> did you just talk to me like I'm your pal <laughs> at the pub I don't know. We're not getting off on the right foot. Okay. So uh, you need to get off on the right foot with the examiner. Okay. That's an idiom, by the way. I'm always teaching you, right? So you need to get off on the right foot with the examiner uh, to show that you know proper English for a situation. Okay, so I keep reminding you of that and I'm sure many students realize like, oh yeah, we always have um, students joining in who are using kind of awkward informal English with an examiner, okay? So here, Jasam Preet, um, it's a very common mistake. Many of your peers make it. My full name is Jasam Preet Singh. Please address me by my given name. Jashan, that would be appropriate, situation appropriate English, okay? All right. So pay attention to that, all right? Um, again, Damaric, it's the same. You don't say, you may call me. You, you don't say, you may call me to a professor or to an authority, a police officer or uh, the hiring manager in a company. You don't say, you may, you may call me. Um, you say, please call me, okay? 
you you request instead of give permission. All right, um, and then they will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better. So they say, okay, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What do you do in your spare time? Okay, then you answer, um, in my free time, I like to play with my children and pass on my uh, knowledge. Yesterday, I uh, taught my daughter to ride a bicycle. And later in the day, I watch a movie uh, with my wife uh, to unwind and spend quality time together. Okay? So, nice full sentence without over speaking. All right? So, what do you do in your spare time? Paraphrase. In my free time, I like to play with my children and pass on my knowledge. Yesterday, I taught my daughter to ride a bicycle, and later in the day, I watch a movie with my wife to unwind and spend quality time together. And then stop, wait for the next question. Okay. Angel is using some nice vocabulary today. That's great to see Angel. Let's show everybody else from the chat. Um, paraphrasing is a great idea. Okay, and there are lots of ways to do it. The English language is extremely diverse. Uh, you have to learn paraphrasing. Paraphrasing means to uh, say the same idea in different ways. I will show you a little bit more on that in just a moment. Let's take a look at what Angel says here. So Angel says, if I have time to kill, as I am a movie buff, I usually binge watch Netflix with my friend. Just like last weekend during my leisure time, we watch more than three movies in the day. Okay, Angel, good. Quick typing. Do try to pay attention to syntax capitalization. Okay. So if I have time to kill, that's a nice paraphrase. Um, it's a, an expression, okay? Um, I paraphrase spare time with free time. So I'm using just a simple synonym here, okay? Um, and then uh, Angel says, as I'm a movie buff, I usually binge watch, it's a nice expression, Netflix with my friend. And then the example, smooth example. Notice how Angel doesn't say for example, she just gives the example. It's obvious that it's an example. Uh, just like last weekend during uh, my uh, leisure time, we watched more than three movies in a single day. We would use the word single here uh, angel to emphasize the day in one day in a single day emphasis on single um, students again just a quick FYI so um, the websites that we use to power these live classes it's aehelp.com you join the premium version by clicking this big red button we will use this website shortly to talk to students what I want to um, reveal to you is in your uh, full online academic IELTS course in your my student account you have these um, you have these key strategies okay and they're very important for the IELTS um, this is where you should start uh, it introduces three key strategies critical thinking paraphrasing and visualization okay those three strategies are absolutely a must when you are learning for the IELTS exam. So um, we're focusing on paraphrasing right now and when you click on these uh, you're going to have a nice description of what these are. And right now we want to find um, paraphrasing. Okay, so let me see if I can, here we go. Okay. So paraphrasing, um, we can use synonyms. So here you can see like the simple way to paraphrase is a synonym using big, large, OK? 
okay? And you need to practice all of these for your IELTS exam. So today in the speaking, when you're answering questions, use the questions and also paraphrase with these techniques. So the next, um, the next one is antonym negative. And so for example, uh, stay, don't go. Okay, so in the case of, uh, let's say, free time, what would be an antonym negative, everybody? So instead of uh, free time, if I want to paraphrase this with an antonym negative or spare time, what would be an antonym negative paraphrasing? Okay, and when you can master these different techniques of paraphrasing and mix them, that's when you've got really good communication like band eight, band nine. What would be an antonym negative for free time? Not quality time. Quality time would be a synonym. Me time is a synonym. Okay, so free time equals me time, quality time, spare time, okay. Um, what would be the antonym negative? Downtime is still a synonym. These are all synonyms. Okay, what would be an antonym negative? Yeah, very good, Kruti. So Kruti says, when I am not busy, not busy, right? This would be an antonym negative. Uh, not at work or school, okay? These would be uh, free time. Now be careful, it doesn't always paraphrase perfectly, but this is a good example of antonym negative. Okay, very nice. Okay, so that's another way to paraphrase uh, spare time. Okay, um, going back to the course in your premium package, right? Um, idioms and expressions, of course, are another way. Um, here in this example, um, when we want to say uh, to have the same idea, we can use an idiom. The idiom is to be on the same page. An idiom or an expression for free time uh, would be like what Angel used, time to kill. Okay, uh, me time is actually an expression as well. It's better um, said as an expression, so we'll put it here, okay? All right, so that would be uh, an expression or an idiom. Okay, uh, past time would be up here. That would be a synonym, okay? All right, now we have more, there's, there's more, <laughs> there's more. Let's see, does that still fit on your screen? Um, there's grammar, okay? So grammar is another way to paraphrase and you're kind of missing the example here just because of my framing, but grammar is another way to paraphrase. So when you paraphrase with grammar, it means that you're changing the grammar of the question. So here, uh, changing the grammar would be simply changing the order of uh, not starting with in my free time, I like to read books, but saying I like to read books in my free time. So you can switch grammar uh, to paraphrase answers or sentences as well. Okay. Um, and then you have descriptive paraphrasing. Okay, also descriptive paraphrasing would be like when I have one or two hours in the evening to do what I like. I like to watch a movie or read a book, okay? This one's called descriptive paraphrasing, okay? So um, I've shown you uh, synonyms, antonym negative, expressions, idioms, descriptive, and grammatical paraphrasing. So those are five different ways of paraphrasing words and information and Using, mastering all of those in your speaking and writing is your ticket to getting high band scores. Everybody clear on that? So mastering and using a different uh, ways of paraphrasing. So synonyms, 
antonym, negative, grammar, description, expression or idioms we can say. Um, is your ticket to a high band score in the uh, speaking and writing sections. Okay, everybody clear on that? So again, uh, students, it's just one of the many, many benefits of uh, the uh, joining the premium IELTS package um, at aehelp.com. So make sure to uh, visit us there, check us out there, click that big red button, use that course every single day, and you will be very happy with it. And not just for IELTS, but for your student life, your professional life. These are also extremely important uh, concepts and tools. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay, Domenico says, yup. All right. All right, good, good, good. Now, let's keep going with some questions. Let's jump to the topic here. So let's talk about uh, communicating. Um, IELTS part one will always be some kind of a general topic that we all have our ideas on. Uh, communication, absolutely. Do you communicate? Looks like it. You're using the chat right now to communicate with each other and me. Good. Um, so we all communicate, right? We've got mobile phones. We left definitely live in the age of communication, we can say, uh, right? We have our mobile phones and more ways to communicate than ever before. Okay, so let's talk about communicating. So when you think about communicating and when the um, examiner introduces this topic, communication, you should immediately be collecting all the information in your head that you can. So when you think of communication, what words come to mind? Navjot, the course is different price in different countries. It doesn't cost much. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access. Just check it out. You'll see the price um, on the checkout form in your country. Okay, so we adjust it to different currencies. All right, Anna says, communicating, you can say chit-chat, which is a casual conversation. Sure. Pen pal, I love it. I think pen pal is just one word. It doesn't, well, maybe not. Okay, uh, pen pal, uh, internet, very good. Social media, uh, typing, chatting, sure. Um, video, audio calls, very good. Phone and friends, mm-hmm. Social platforms, yep. Uh, maybe you're thinking of uh, X, uh, formerly Twitter. I had to, guys. I couldn't. I, <laughs> I couldn't resist putting that one in there. Um, X, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Instagram I couldn't resist that one um, Instagram uh, and then uh, maybe messenger Viber and lots more right WhatsApp all right yeah so all those platforms so lots lots okay good now the examiner will ask questions like this um, who do you text with the most? Okay, who do you text with the most? Give a nice full sentence answer. Okay, I uh, text most frequently with my younger uh, brother Mario uh, through WhatsApp as he is currently uh, living in Europe and I'm in uh, North America. So it is a quick and convenient way to uh, communicate considering we are nine hours apart. I just sent him a text before uh, walking into this exam okay 
Um, so there you go. Uh, answer, explain, example. I text most frequently with my younger brother Mario through WhatsApp as he is currently living in Europe and I'm in North America. So it's a quick and com convenient way to communicate considering we are nine hours apart. I just sent him a text before walking into this exam. Now this is a pretty good answer. I can make it a little bit better. Anybody know how? So some of you are like, oh no, that's a really good answer. It's probably a band nine as it is. I can make it a little bit better though. How do you think I can make that a little bit better? Okay. In the meantime, let's take a look at what some of our students are writing. Elizabeth uh, writes, the person I communicate with the most is my sister Andrea. She lives in Colombia with my nephew and we video call each other every night uh, during the week at least 15 minutes at 7.30 just to stay updated. Um, this is going to be a band five, believe it or not. Maybe a band six. Elizabeth, there's a major problem here. Somebody tell me. So here, what's missing? And here, what's the major problem? Okay. Elizabeth says, oh no. Elizabeth, what do you think it is? Can you can you catch your mistake? Okay. Yeah, Carolina caught it. And Carolina, give Elizabeth a chance to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, Fuang caught it too. You have to be very careful about that. You have to answer on topic, right? Exactly. The question asks about texting. Yes, devil's in the details, ladies and gentlemen. That's an expression in English, uh, the devil's in the details. To get a band eight or nine, you must answer the questions correctly. Otherwise, it's great English, Elizabeth. That's why it's so frustrating. It's like, but that was great English. It was. It was just the wrong answer, right? To get a banner 8, 9, you have to answer questions correctly. Okay? Very important. Okay. Um, so the person I text with, right? It's just that one silly little word. Uh, the person I text with the most is my sister, Andrea. She lives in Colombia with my nephew. And we SMS, right? Uh, each other. So we're paraphrasing. SMS each other every night during the week at least uh, 10 times. And that's the answer to the previous question is what's missing? The number of times. I test text most frequently with my younger brother Mario at least two to three times a day through WhatsApp. Okay, now it's a band nine. All right, that's what we want to do. Devil's in the details, everybody. Devil's in the details. All right, next question. How do you usually communicate with your friends? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Most often, I use software like uh, WhatsApp and Messenger to keep in touch. Here's an expression to paraphrase, keep in touch with uh, my friends. Okay, uh, what should I do after this? So when I have this, most often I use software like WhatsApp and Messenger to keep in touch with my friends. What should I, um, what should I follow with? Harmeet says my near and dear ones. Sure, it's not about family here. Though careful, Harmeet. It's not asking how do you usually communicate with your family. It's how do you usually communicate with your friends. Most often I use software like WhatsApp and Messenger to keep in touch with my friends. Fuang says explanation and example. Exactly. So what kind of explanation and example would be the most common sense here? So what would be the most sensible? Okay. How would you continue here? Okay. 
Uh, Maya, I would not write more about what else I use. I would actually give an explanation here. Instead of giving more answers, it's better to give an explanation. Okay, and what would be a good explanation to include here? So most often, I use software like WhatsApp and Messenger to keep in touch with my friends using my mobile phone. Okay, if I want to include the hardware, my mobile phone. And then comes the explanation, right? Because, yes, Carolina, or I can use since. Fuang says, explain the usage of apps in communicating. Mm, kind of, Fuang. I would just keep it simpler, okay? I heard, I, I had a, um, an interesting conversation uh, with MTJ, and he said, uh, you know, your band nine videos for speaking, though, sometimes the candidates, their speak, speech just kind of seems simple. It should. Band nine is not necessarily complicated and it should not seem like it's confusing. It should appear to be simple and logical. That's considered expert communication when your audience feels it's simple or easy to understand what you're saying with extreme clarity and detail, right? Yes, David's got the right idea. So David says, I would say something like, because it's the cheapest, and a fun way to share not only ideas, but pictures and videos as well. I just sent my friend a video of my baking disaster this morning, and we had a good laugh. <laughs> Let's do that. Oh, I sometimes have to amuse myself. So uh, that would be your answer, explanation, and then, of course, the example, right? Always think examples, right? So 60, 70% of your answers should have some kind of a smooth visual example. Remember I said visualization is very important. It's one of the strategies, right? I said paraphrasing. I showed you what that is. And I mentioned two other ones, critical thinking, visualization, visual language, visual communication, high band scores. All right. Okay. So uh, how do you usually communicate with your friends? Most often I use software like WhatsApp and Messenger to keep in touch with friends using my mobile phone because it's the cheapest and a fun way to share not only ideas but pictures and videos as well. I just sent my friend a video of, making, of my baking disaster this morning and we had a good emoji laugh. <laughs> You can do that, by the way, in IELTS. If you know how to do that expression properly, in this case, it's absolutely correct, and the examiner might reward you with a smile. It's good. If you can, you know, don't try to do it, but if it naturally happens that you get your examiner to smile, it's usually a good sign. So with an emoji laugh, right? Teary face. There, Anahita, Chayani. Emoji laugh. Okay. So emoji laugh, okay? All right, uh, students, we're putting along nicely here. We're making some good ground and we've got you know another four questions here to cover for sure. Uh, let's tackle the rest of these questions uh, through audio chat. Um, so for this, uh, we go to our website, okay? We're going to take some volunteers for speaking. We will answer these questions, talk a little bit more strategy, uh, learn some more vocabulary, use some more paraphrasing, and work towards those better band scores. So first step, of course, is the website. Hence me repeating myself. We use the websites to power these live lessons. Um, so go to the website. Manch, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Um, so go to the website, uh, log into your My Student account. Uh, you can create a free account if you'd like. You don't have to pay. Some people are like, oh, this is where I have to pay. I'm out. Uh, no, 
<laughs> this is not where you have to pay. Uh, you can do this for free. And I encourage you, try it, use it for free. Then if you like it, pay, sure, doesn't matter. Okay, so go to the website. Um, on the website, you can use the premium version by clicking the big red button. Again, it doesn't cost a lot. Or you can click this green button that's just right kind of behind my head there to try it out, create an account. Uh, when you do that, go to your My Student account. By the way, students, uh, we've got this new button here. So we're making upgrades and changes to the websites. There might be situations where you'll be, you're like, hmm, that's weird, that happened, or I didn't see that before. Uh, we're going to have live classes exclusively through our website coming up. We're doing a lot of uh, improvements over the next little bit. So, um, But anyway, right now, we're using a different function. We're using this function here, um, the student partner speaking. Let me move that up a little bit. It's just kind of hidden behind my head there. Um, so we're using the uh, student partner speaking right there. Um, and uh, you can click on that, accept the terms. Uh, you have to, it basically means that you're gonna be polite and uh, you're going to put your best foot forward, okay? Use a headset if you got it, use a microphone if you got it. Now when you're in here, then uh, you can volunteer. And you notice that there are lots of people with these premium uh, student tags. Um, keep an eye out for those students. That means they're here often and um, they're good study partners. Uh, so uh, premium students, I strongly encourage you to uh, connect with each other and uh, practice with each other. And then you'll find me in here too, everybody. You'll find me in here as master. Uh, just when you find me, uh, click the blue envelope next to my name and send me a message. Say, I'd like to try or I want to volunteer or uh, I'd like to answer some questions. And then I can uh, click and here's Anahita who has been a student for a, quite a while and she is in Canada as well. Um, I think uh, Anahita, you're from Afghanistan if I remember correctly, but you might correct me. She's in Ontario right now though. So Anahita, are you ready? There is this reason that I'm reaching it. There's a, there's a, there's an extra reason that I'm connecting with Anahita here. So hopefully we can. Sir? Hi Anahita. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm also good. Thanks for asking. All right, Anahita, it's good to see you in here now. I guess one of the reasons you're here is because you have another IELTS exam coming up soon from the emails. I saw that, right? Yes, sir. When is the yes, test? Sir. Sorry? When is the test? On Saturday. It's on Saturday. Uh, is that for all? The speaking, the reading, writing, listening, all of it? Yes, for all sections. Okay. Are you doing the speaking before the other three sections or after? After. I'm doing the speaking after the three sections. Okay, try to stay in English for the whole time. Um, when you have that break, I, I guess you probably have like at least a couple hours between your um, listening, reading, writing, and your speaking, right? Um, I think it's more than a couple of hours. Yeah, that's it's kind of a weird one, right? Like the, you'll do the listening, reading, writing in the morning, and then you have like a four or five hour break, and then you go back for the speaking, something like that, right? Yes, it's weird. Yeah. Time. So um, during that time, try to take it easy. Don't stress yourself. Um, chat with your friends. Stay in English. Don't do any heavy studying. Don't tire your brain out. Make sure you have lots of energy. In fact, if you can, you might even want to do a siesta, like uh, do like a one hour nap. Um, between if you can it's good it'll give your brain a fresh start a fresh charge okay siestas are good I, I'm sure a lot of our Spanish uh, peers like uh, maybe Carolina or uh, Domenico even in uh, uh, in um, Sicily will say yes taking a nap during the day is a good idea <laughs> so uh, but so before can... that can I ask a question apps well before your nap or, be, or right now <laughs> right now right now <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm teasing you yes of uh, course and... And Dithin, can I, uh, for example, if the question is yes, no, or not given, can I use, uh, can I write only Y or N or NG instead of yes, no, not given in the paper? 
Yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing then you're doing the paper-based exam, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can use Y okay. and, and NG. Yes. Just make sure that you don't confuse it with T, F, and NG, okay? So that would be wrong. Okay. So don't don't confuse it with true, false, not given. Okay, that's a weird one, but pay attention, okay? Okay. All right, Anahita, that sounds good. I also got your editing. I will get that to you uh, within the next 24 hours, okay? So okay, as I said, I'll get okay. that to you later today. Okay, Anahita, let's uh, let's do a little bit of practice, speaking part one, okay? Are you ready? Yes, I am. Awesome, okay, here we go. Uh, so welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. May I see your passport? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a passport, but here is my identification, my peer that I have used to register a few days ago. Please have a look. What is your full name? Uh, my given name is Anahita. My last name is Rahimi. Please go, uh, call me by my first name, Anahita. Okay, Anahita. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better, and then some questions on a, a general topic. Who do you spend your free time with? Uh, I spend my free time, my spare time with my family members because uh, I am really close to uh, them. Moreover, I sometimes uh, spend this uh, quality because, how oh, can I start again? Sorry. Yes. I usually spend my free time with my, my family members offline and my with my friends uh, online because I really want to have quality time, quality time with them. Indeed, uh, I just uh, had... Uh, a cheerful day with my family members uh, uh, in the restaurant yesterday and uh, at the same time I called my friend Guara to uh, uh, to sing like the chirping of swallows. Let's talk about communication. Um, how do you usually communicate with your friends? Uh, since I don't have uh, in-person friends a lot uh, so I communicate with my friends through uh, virtual world uh, by utilizing uh, uh, gadgets like uh, WhatsApp, gadgets uh, by utilizing applications such as WhatsApp and uh, Clubhouse. Indeed, uh, they are really helpful tools uh, to uh, build up uh, uh, new friends. Just yesterday, I made new friends uh, through Clubhouse, and that was really uh, enjoying for me. Okay, I'm going to stop there and give you some feedback. All right. So, strong start. Nice. Um, I'll give you some corrections. So, uh, the beginning was very good. Um, here's a couple of tips right away, Anahita. Don't rush. You're trying to speak too quickly, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, you'll notice that uh, your examiner, if you do this in your test, uh, like me, your examiner, especially in Canada, uh, your examiner, if they're like me, where they're talking to you very slowly almost back at you, it's because they're almost trying to indirectly with their communication hint or suggest to you without saying it with their speed. They're trying to suggest to you to just be calm, slow yourself down, focus on what you're saying right um, uh, Canadian culture we have this very interesting way of kind of communicating how we want the communication to be with our tone and our language and I'm sure you have felt that in Ontario when you're in some places a person will be like hi how are you today they're basically suggesting talk like me really friendly in a calm voice um, yes, so <laughs> yeah, I, I know you know um, so so try to do that don't be so nervous don't rush so much okay calm um, yourself you'll make okay, less sorry. mistakes uh, when I was in the, my exam lastly last time I was very calm and uh, because there was nobody else and I was not on YouTube, but now because maybe I am on YouTube, that's why mm -hmm. I'm a little bit mm -hmm. nervous and angry at the same time. Yeah, and that makes sense. And that's fine, Anahita. So I'm just, you know, practice it. Every situation you get, just calm yourself. Yeah. Um, so your first answer was really good, Anahita, where you said, well, I don't have my passport um, because I used my ID card to register. And this is the card. Uh, that was very nice, natural communication. I like that. It was really original and it showed 
showed that you're here to communicate with me and you're not just trying to use some template or memorized language. So that was a really good introduction, okay? Uh, again, just slowly and calmly. Um, when I asked you about communication and I asked you uh, how do you usually communicate with your friends, you gave me a very complicated answer, okay? Especially in part one, just keep your answers simpler. So you started with, since I don't have in-person friends, way too complicated. So just keep it simple. Most of my friends live far away, so I communicate with them through applications like Clubhouse. And then you don't make many mistakes, right? So you make less mistakes. <laughs> this answer, Anahita, was about a band 5 to 5.5 because it contained a lot of awkward mistakes and you can avoid that by just keeping it simpler. So you said to build up new friends. You don't build up new friends, you make new friends. To make new friends, okay? okay. okay. Um, so when you slow down, then you'll catch some of these mistakes too. Um, if you want to start again, especially in the beginning, tell the examiner that you're nervous. So I'm a bit nervous, let me start that again, okay? Can you just repeat that after me? I'm a bit nervous, let me start that again. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. Please, let me start it again. Okay, and then really when you say that, check yourself. Go, okay, slower, paying attention. All right, okay, and then go. Okay, okay. all right. Okay. Anahita, uh, keep working hard. Keep coming back. Uh, you've got a uh, full lineup of classes, live classes tomorrow too. So I hope to see you in the live classes tomorrow. And then uh, definitely check the essay that I send back in detail as soon as you get it, okay? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, you're welcome. Bye, Anahita. All oh, sir. Have a good day. All right. Let's wish Anahita good luck. I forgot to say good luck, Anahita. Good luck, Anahita, on your test. Okay, I hope other uh, peers of yours will give you or wish you a good luck message um, for uh, your exam as well. Okay. Um, Fuang, you've had a few days to figure things out. So let's check in with you, see how you're doing. Are you ready? Fuang is not a premium member on our website, but she is a long-standing YouTube member. And we're always giving chances to students who come back and also, of course, to new students. So if you're new, hang in there. I will be looking for new students as well. Um, Fuang, if you're there, uh, give me a sign. I know there's a six second delay between us. So um, Fuang says, I have two accounts. Um, which one is your other account, Fuang? It's at the bottom. <laughs> All right. Let me see. There's your other account. All right, Fuang, really trying to get in there. Good. Fuang, are you ready? Let's try that one. Um, okay. Good. You're, you're finding solutions. That's the key, everybody. Finding solutions. Let's see. Hopefully, Fuang. Fingers crossed. Mm. Oh no, Fuang, I still don't hear you. Um, Fuang, it, it seems like you're on the right path. You said you're using a VPN connection. Um, tr have you tried connecting? If Try connecting with another student. If it works with other students, it should work with me. If it's not working, try to route through a different place. So switch your VPN location. location for tomorrow okay so location location okay so switch your VPN location for tomorrow try that um, and if it works for another student or with another student it should work okay don't give up I I'm sure you'll succeed okay uh, let's check in let's see if we can um, maybe find somebody new that we haven't talked to Deborah Deborah are you ready Let's check in with Deborah. Deborah says, please, I want to volunteer today. I have about 14 days for my exam. Well, we have a video for that. We just released it, Deborah. 14 days to your exam. You should check that one out. It'll give you some really good tips on what you should do. So, Deborah, if you're there, mm hmm. Hi, Deborah. Hi, say. 
Deborah, make sure to mute YouTube. So just the um, the volume button on YouTube, just click it to mute it, and then you won't get to to audio. So just the audio through the website. Hi, say. Hi, Deborah. Can you mute YouTube? So just mute YouTube for me. So use the website audio only, Deborah. Okay. It's like we're listening to the past. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay, Deborah? Yay. Okay. All right. It sounds like you muted YouTube. How are you? I'm fine. Are you? I am good. Where are you, Deborah? I'm from Ghana. From Ghana. Awesome. And you've yes. got your IELTS exam in 14 days. Yeah, I think on the 12th. On the 12th. On the 12th of October? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And why are you taking the IELTS? Um, I'm a midwife and I want to work in UK. A midwife and you want to work in the UK? That's awesome. For those of you who don't know what a midwife is, a midwife is a person who helps deliver babies, right, Deborah? Yeah. How many babies have you helped deliver so far? Oh, on counter, I would say over, over, over 30. Over 30 little babies. Yeah. Well, that's amazing, Deborah. Thank you for that. That's a beautiful job. All right, Deborah, well, let me. Um, ask you some questions give me some nice full sentence answers and then i'll give you some uh, feedback and advice okay all right all right um let's talk about uh communication who do you text with the most oh uh, i usually i frequently chat with my boyfriend who happens to be in nigeria about an hour away about an hour ahead of us and she usually uses WhatsApp because that's the only social media app that she uses often. It is very convenient whenever we chat. And are you, you a, before joining this? Are you a talkative Hello? person? Please, you said. Are you a talkative person? I can't get you. When is it difficult for you to talk to others? Well. I can't get a question well. Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me okay, Deborah? Yeah. Okay. If you could improve communication technology, what might you do? Well, me, I live in Accra and most of my siblings are in a village. So most of the time, whenever I want to talk to them, they have network a uh, poor communication issue. So whenever I want to talk to them, they have to take a car from where they are to a next town. For that place, the only place they can talk to me well. Okay, I'll stop there. And, and I say that feedback. because they have issue with a network, uh, we managed to buy a Wi-Fi for them. So nowadays, they don't go to the, the following town to talk to us. They'll be in a okay. village that we communicate with them using the Wi-Fi. All right, Deborah, I'm going to give you some feedback. Um, first of all, I think you've got good English, but we need to communicate better. Um, so you have good vocabulary. We're definitely miscommunicating a bit. So we need to find harmony in our communication. Um, I would say that your band score is about a band six. Um, it's really hard to tell because some of your answers are really good and then some questions you're not answering. So let me give you some tips on how you can improve, okay? First all of right. all, Deborah, really pay attention to the question and give a clear answer, then stop, okay? So here, this last question, if you could improve communication technology, what might you do? You said, well, I live in a, I couldn't hear that, but I, I think you said something like a city. And then you said, my siblings yeah. my siblings live in a village and so they have network issues, okay? So you're giving me the context, you're giving me what's happening, but you're not answering the question. So here, the better answer, the simpler answer that gets you a higher score, just use the question, so use the conditional and give a clear answer. So if, I have the chance 
I would improve the networks in the towns around Ghana so that I could communicate with my siblings better. Sir, please, I didn't hear the last part well. Yeah. I'm going to repeat it, Deborah. Don't worry. They often have network issues and it is really annoying. Okay, so use the question, Deborah, and answer very directly. Okay, so it's the same answer that you gave me, but it's a much clearer answer. Okay, just pay attention. Here's the question If you could improve communication technology, what might you do? If I have the chance, I would improve the network in the towns around Ghana so I could communicate with my siblings better. They often have network issues and it's really annoying. Can you try to give me that answer? I'll ask you one more time. So give me that answer, okay? If you could okay. improve communication technology, what might you do? Well, if I get a chance, I will improve the network in Ghana. Because anytime I talk to my siblings, I barely hear them. And they have to even move to the next town. So I rather improve the network so that I can talk to them and hear them clearly. Good. And then stop and wait for the next question. That's what you want to do. Okay. Nice, clear, direct answers like that. And you should be able to get a 6.5, maybe even a 7, Deborah. Okay. All right. Okay, that was really good. Thank you for volunteering and I really hope that you make it to the UK and deliver hundreds and hundreds of beautiful little uh, British Amen. babies. <laughs> but I didn't know something. I, I wrote I wrote first one. I didn't, I didn't pass. I wrote second one and I passed the reading. I passed the uh, listening and mm -hmm. then the writing. So this is my third time. I'm hoping since I've joined your class, I'll make it this time one and I'll come back with testimony. Uh, thank you, Deborah. Absolutely. And we're here to help. So if you have questions, just let us know. Okay, Deborah? I, 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 I pray that I get a chance to volunteer again before the exams. Absolutely. Come back. I'll look for you for sure. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Bye, Deborah. Bye. All right. Let's give Deborah a thumbs up. And again, good luck to Deborah, right? Um, all right. Um, yeah, so there were a couple of questions. Justin Preet saying they skipped a couple of questions because we couldn't hear clearly. There were also some uh, communication issues there, I think, from the network. Um, when So let me get back to that. Um, so uh, if you do not understand a question, so let's focus on this one here. Are you a talkative person, right? If you don't understand the question, or if you can't hear it clearly, you can just say, can you please repeat that? I didn't catch that question. Okay. So you can say that. Now, the examiner will repeat. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they just go to the next question, okay? But they will usually repeat it, especially in part one. So they'll say, are you a talkative person? And if you're not sure what talkative means, you can ask them, but they will not necessarily define for you. So um, you can say, well, what does talkative mean? They might, but in many cases, they won't tell you. They'll just go to the next question. Um, you can try to do this by paraphrasing. So you can check by doing this, okay? Are you asking me if I am a very social person who likes to talk a lot? Okay. And then the examiner will usually say yes. So they can't paraphrase for you, but they can agree that you're correct. Yes, I am. Okay, because it's fair, right? Like it's like, okay, that's what you're asking me, right? So you can, that's where paraphrasing is very powerful. So you can say, are you asking me if I'm a very social person who likes to talk a lot? Yes, I am. Oh yeah, I'm definitely social. I hang out with my friends often and I'm, and I, I chit chat, I'm a chatterbox. Okay. I'm a chatterbox. I sure am. <laughs> I'm a chatterbox. I like to talk a lot with my friends. Okay, so um, that would be an answer there. All right, so paraphrasing is a great way to do it. Okay, uh, let's check for another volunteer, everybody. Let's see who's out there. Okay, uh, Maya, we don't often get to hear from Maya. 
Maya, yes, you can call me. I know, Maya, you have an issue with me calling you. So, uh, Maya, if you're there, yes, you can. Yes, give me a call. Okay, usually it's not good, but if you can't see, I think it's on some Apple devices. You can't see the call button or something. Hi, Maya. Hi, Maya. Hi, Adrian. How are you? Hello. Oh, I'm fine. How about you? I am doing great, Maya. Uh, Maya, where are you? Oh, just a minute. Let me move the YouTube. Oh, now better. Good, good. Maya, can you tell everybody which country you're calling from and why you're Turkey, taking the IELTS? So I'm calling from Turkey and I'm taking IELTS to do my master's degree in U.S. Turkey USA. and to do master's in the USA. That's awesome, yes. Maya, and you're volunteering more and more, so good for you. Um, all right, uh, Maya, are you ready for a couple of questions? Yes. Okay, let's talk about uh, communicating. Uh, are you a talkative person? Oh, am I a talkative person? Good question. I wouldn't say I'm a talkative, um, however, I wouldn't say I'm not a talkative person. I'd say uh, it depends. What about I'm talking and with whom? But people around me, my friends, call me a detective. It's my nickname because I like more listen than talk. And I'm asking a lot of questions. When is it difficult for you to talk to others? Excuse me, can you repeat? Sure. When is it difficult for you to talk to others? Um, for me, talk to others is difficult. Oh, um, okay. For me, talk to others is difficult when I have bad mood. When my uh, lovely ones who are anxious about me are uh, trying to talk with me to find out what happened to me, I'm just keep saying nothing. I'm okay. Uh, to not go into further conversation. I just won't be left alone such time. If you could improve communication technology, what might you do? Well, uh, if I could improve communication technology, I might create some applications uh, to use a hologram for smartphones or laptops. Nowadays, a lot of people far away from their home, from their family, so feeling like they're near you, near like nearby your mom or father family, that will be exciting and helpful for feeling lonely. Okay, let's stop there. I'll give you some feedback. All right. Um, so, Maya those answers would be about a band um, six okay so mm -hmm. that would be class so when when the examiner is thinking like okay what band is this they're looking for grammatical range and accuracy uh, fluency coherence lexical resource pronunciation they're looking mm -hmm. at all of those ultimately though um, what they're thinking about are the band score descriptors so um, a band six in the IELTS is known as fluent English. So it means you're talking, like you understand the question and you talk uh, and you're fluent. A band seven is classed as good English. When the examiner is thinking seven, good English, they're thinking, okay, there's a couple of mistakes, but nothing really awkward or where I have to think, hmm, we should really rephrase that or say that a different way. So mistakes happen and they don't really affect coherence and they're not um, you know overly awkward and then band seven or sorry band eight is very good that's where there's selective language so um, the candidate is choosing specific expressions or words on purpose and band nine is expert level where there's control over emphasis control over contextual language content is very accurate as well so that's where it's an expert level so here, Maya, you might ask me, well, Adrian, why are you thinking I'm fluent and I'm not good? So what's creating that issue? Right, Maya? Yes, that's kind of, and that's the I question. think I know the answer. <laughs> okay, what do you think is the answer? I'm not, uh, I'm not making the sentences the right way. 
Yeah. 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 So your word choice and your grammatical mistakes, although I can understand what you're saying, if I want to correct them, I have to do quite a bit of adjusting. So quite a bit of replacement to make it seem accurate and natural. So um, you said, uh, so I'll give you an example. I said, when is it difficult for you to talk to others? And you said, um, for to talk to others when I have bad mood. Okay. So here, naturally, you would just simply want to say, I find it challenging to communicate when I'm in a bad mood. Can you just repeat that after me? And this is for everybody, so not just Maya. Just repeat after me. I find it challenging to communicate when I'm in a bad mood. Uh, I find it challenging to communicate when I'm in a bad mood. Yeah, when I'm in a bad mood. Yeah. And then you said, yeah, and then you said, when my lovely ones who are anxious about me, um, again, complicated, convoluted, unnatural. I know what you're saying, but it's quite awkward. So we want to be natural. When my friends and family worry about me, okay, just say that. When my friends and family worry about me. When my friends and family worry about me. I tend to shut down and I, I want to be to left alone down. and I won't be left alone okay so you've got good ideas you've got vocabulary you understand what you're asked what you need to say your goal is to change this kind of um, confusing, inaccurate choice of words and grammar into accurate choice of words and grammar. And for you, Maya, the tip that I give you and for a lot of uh, candidates who are in very similar situation as you, lots and lots of repetition of natural native English. So Maya, when you're watching movies or TV series, English TV series, English movies, watch it with subtitles and repeat the characters. So copy what they say, copy how they say it. For instance, if you're watching Lonely Planet, nature documentaries with David Attenborough. David Attenborough is British, he has a British accent, but he's got very beautiful expressions and a very clear style of speaking. Watch that documentary, watch his narrative. Do you know who I'm talking about, David Attenborough, Maya? I don't think so. If if I see if I his see name him, is maybe, yeah. Think. If you hear his voice, you know he's 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 a naturalist maybe, and yeah. a zoologist. He's extremely famous. He's very old now, but his name is David Attenborough. I don't know how to spell his last name. Well, it'll probably tell me. Um, yeah, Attenborough. Okay, uh, nature documentaries. If, it, um, if it's about nature, I definitely know him. Yeah, well, of course, he does like the narration for the most famous nature documentaries. He's, he's been doing it for like 70 years or something, like 7D, 70 years. Um, so um, yeah, David Attenborough nature documentaries, copy what he says, copy how he's saying it, and then that will start to click for you how to naturally express yourself, okay? Yes. Lots, okay. lots and lots of repetition. Okay, Maya, keep it up and you'll get there faster than you think, okay? Okay, thank you, Adrian. You're very welcome. Thank you both. Bye, Maya. Okay, bye. All right, let's give Maya a thumbs up. That was really good. Okay. All right, um, students, we're going to wrap it up there. But hey, you don't need to. Look at all of you beautiful people in here. You can communicate with each other, and the website has questions for you up here. You can click on these and you can chat with each other too. You can click on Maya and say, hey Maya, would you like to continue asking some questions uh, and answering some questions? Let's talk about your hometown. Practice with each other, students. We want you to not just be here for live lessons, but we want you to be a community uh, through our website. Um, and uh, again, uh, this website is aehelp.com for Academic IELTS. It looks like this, the homepage, although we have a new homepage coming for you soon as well. Um, so uh, lots of exciting improvements happening over the next little bit. Uh, click that big red button. 
to join our premium IELTS package. We've had lots of students in here. We've answered lots of questions, lots of tips and strategies. Fuang, Elizabeth, Domenico, Maya, and all of those awesome members that were there, our premium students that were there. Thank you so much for your support. You're brilliant, awesome people. Um, Carolina, thank you for helping out in the chat. Uh, students for General IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. It's the green background, okay? Keep that in mind. And um, tomorrow I'm back. Um, I'm going to be uh, hosting two live classes tomorrow. Um, sometimes I'm looking at the other camera. Um, so two live classes tomorrow. Uh, it will be reading for members a little bit earlier than this class. And then uh, it will be listening part one and two for subscribers. So subscribe to the channel, okay? Um, and um, make sure to uh, use the websites. Again, that's aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for uh, general IELTS. Keep it real, be yourself. Live, love life, enjoy the rest of your day. Much love to all of you wherever you are. I hope to see you tomorrow. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria, Canada, here on the West Coast. Bye, everybody.